It feeds on the leaf of rice and you can control it by using Adel's 40. These are chemicals that you can get from stores of um, farmers or agro services around. Also, you can, weevil is another pest of rice that affects the rice after you have harvested it in storage. For instance, you go to the market buy your rice. If it might be affected by weevil, if it's taking too too long in your house, and you can control that by fumigating the place you store your rice to prevent the growth of such pests. Then the disease of rice, blast. Blast is a disease and is a fungal disease which infects the seedlings and the adult plants. You can control rice blast by planting resistant variety that can resist this disease. Then you can use fungicides such as bedesin and cumin. Also, we move on to talk about the pest of granules. Weevil is a major pest. It pierces O in the granules and you can control that by fumigation. Also rodents such as rats, rabbits and the rest, they dig the seed in the soil. When the seed is done, there is nothing that will germinate. So you can prevent rodents by using traps. Then the disease of granules is roset. Roset is a virus disease that is spread by aphid and it infects the plants at the flowering time, causing yellowing of leaves and stunted growth, which leads to the eventual death of the granite plant. Then sometimes it induces the plant to produce empty shell. When you have empty shell of granite, then there is nothing the farmer is going to sell in the market. So it's so harmful. Then the pest of maize, stem borers, the stem of maize, the bore the stems to weaken it. You can control stem borers of maize by applying gamalin 20. Then you can plant the crop when the incidence of such stem borers is low. The disease of maize is maize rust caused by a fungus called Pusinia soggy. Then it gives a brick brown single spot on the upper surface of the leaf and leads to the premature death of leaf, which eventually leads to reduction in the crop yield. You can control maize rust by planting resistant variety, then you can control it by early planting or applying sulfur fungicides such as agrosan, GN, fenasand before planting. The pest of cocoa is capsid. Capsid is a cap sucking insect which kills the young shoots and pods and reduces the production of cocoa. Then you can control it by the application of gamma 20 in the middle of rainy season at monthly intervals. The disease of cocoa is black pod seed. It's a fungus called Phytophthora parmivora. And it produces spores that are spread by wind. That's a very, very terrible way of spreading that disease. Because wind will always blow. So the symptoms, small dark brownish spots. Shortly after infection, you will notice small dark brownish spots. Shortly after the pod has been infected, then you will find the appearance of white web on surface of pod after two to three days. Then you have black rod damages on the walls of the fruit and the seed. What are the ways to control the black pod disease of cocoa? First is the removal of disease pod. I said it is spread by wind. So you have to be careful. Once you notice it, just make sure you remove the disease pod. Else your whole farmland of cocoa will be infected. Then you can apply fungicides such as perinos and carbide. Then disease pod must be burnt or buried outside the farm since the spots are spread by wind. So you be careful of disposing disease pod. The pest of cassava. First is caterpillars, which eat up the leaf. Then termites, which damage the plant cuttings. 
white flies, they attack the young seedlings of cassava. Then how do you control the pest of cassava? You can dust the cuttings, the stem cuttings of cassava with aldrin or deldrin. That those are chemical, powdery chemicals before planting them. Then the disease of cassava is cassava mosaic. It's a virus carried by white fly. It leads to molting, yellowing, and culling of leaves. Then reduce it leads to reduced area, reduced area of leaf and eventually leads to reduction in photosynthesis. How do you control cassava mosaic? You plant to tolerant and healthy varieties, then you destroy white flies, since white flies are the carriers of this virus. We talk about the life cycle of aphids. Green fly or certain form of the a certain form of aphid produce eggs internally fertilized by their male forms. Then the eggs are glued to the stem of the plant. They become wingless leaves when weather becomes favorable. Then they grow rapidly and mature in about one week. Certain other forms of aphid lay on fertilized eggs without mating. And the process is called partenogenesis. When eggs are laid without mating, it's called partenogenesis. Then the eggs develop and are hatched into leaves and become wingless leaves when weather becomes favorable. A series of winged partenogenetic females result in a large colony and feeds on the sap of host plants, which causes the death of the plants. The female develops wings and fly to other plants. Each female, each female, beg your pardon, dies out having laid about one to four eggs or more. How do you control a few? You destroy all infected host plants. Then you use insecticide to eliminate adult aphids. What economic importance does aphid has? They feed on plants, so they destroy your plants. They spread organisms which cause disease. Then they render the vegetables unattractive and unmarketable. By the time you have the plants or the leaves of plants being affected by them, piercing, causing different holes, and the plant becomes unattractive. When you take it to the market, nobody wants to buy. Even people that buy, who want to buy at a very, very ridiculous price. Then, they carry more viruses than any other group of insects. So you have to be careful of aphids because they carry more viruses than any other group of insects. Now, we'll be talking about diseases. Diseases are disorders noticed in a plant as a result of physical, chemical, or biological factors. Disorders that you notice in your plants or even in animals, but because we are talking about plants now, disorders that you notice as a result of physical, chemical, or biological factors are called diseases. Then most of the crop diseases are caused by pathogens, are caused by pathogens which kill other organisms in a population. Diseases reduce the size of the population by their attack. Then pathogens or disease-causing organisms include bacteria, fungi, and viruses. We'll be talking about some diseases of some animals. Cochidiasis is caused by a protozoan parasite called Emeria cochidia. It attacks poultry and birds. The animals become infected from contaminated food, water, or dropping from an infected animal. That's the way it spreads. When the food is contaminated, the water is contaminated, or they get in contact with dropping of an infected animal. Then the parasite passes out an oocyst, which survives in the ground, which is then swallowed up by a new host. This results in diarrhea, anemia, diarrhea, constant vomiting and excreting, then anemia, that's loss of blood, dehydration, that's loss of water, weight loss, weakness, then blood stained droppings. That's what cochidiasis leads to. So that's, those are the th symptoms that you observe when your poultry or pig has this cochidiasis. Then how can you control cochidiasis by adding sulfur metazine to the drinking water of 
infected birds three to five days. Then strict hygiene of poultry worker will control or prevent crocodiles from attacking your poultry. Also, you the workers should disinfect their feet before entering into breeding houses of chicks. That's still under hygiene. The next disease that I'm talking about is trypanoso. This is a parasite, a parasite protozoa carried by sessile fly. Trypanosome is carried by sessile fly. And sessile fly attacks us, cattle, dogs, goats, sheep, and camels. The life cycle of the sessile fly. It produces, the female produces a single larvae, not eggs. So it doesn't start from eggs, it starts from larvae. Then it produces about just 12 larvae in her lifetime. That is, the female produces just about 12 larvae in the whole of her lifetime. Then the female mates and born after eight days and undergoes a series of molts or a series of molting. After 10 days in warm weather, the larvae develops into pupa and then becomes adult after three weeks. So that tells you that sessile fly undergoes what we call incomplete metamorphosis because the complete metamorphosis is this from egg developed into larvae, larvae developed into pupae and pupae to adults.